So you're watching Groovefest TV, we're here in the Cigar Lounge and I'm absolutely delighted to be able to introduce four-time Grammy nominee and legendary DJ Kenny Dope. Kenny, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us today. Thank you for having me. What's up? So we're here at a party in paradise. You've got the sea, you've got the sun, you've got the sand. How does uh, this sort of setting affect how you play out or, I mean, does it at all? Well, absolutely. You know, you, you play differently for when you're on the beach in an outdoor event um, opposed to a club that's dark. You know what I'm saying? From a small room to a big room, it's, it's very different. You know what I mean? So it's a different approach. You know, you may have um, beds on the beach. You may have um, a pool at the beach. It's just a different vibe. So you approach the set differently. You know what I mean? You're not going to bang it out. You're not going to, you're going to play like happy, fun kind of vibes. But, you know, what, it's still soulful in, in a soulful setting as well, too. You know what I mean? So um, that's the way I approach it. You know, sometimes I could play down tempo. I could go mid. I could start at one tempo, then slow it down. It depends how I feel. You know, um, I played barefoot yesterday for the first time. So yeah, that that tells you a little bit, you know what I'm saying, of, of of what we were doing So and having a good time. So A little bit of sand between your toes as you're on the deck. Yeah, it was crazy. You know, I mean, just, you know, flip-flops and just, just hanging, you know. What about the fact that we're in, um, you know, talking about kind of international festivals, but that are celebrating kind of dance music and house music. You were very much there at the beginning. Like, how does it feel to have kind of seen that, that progression in, in, in kind of the sound and, and the, the kind of bigness of the scene in a way? It's, it's pretty amazing coming from, you know, the, the block party setting where I started from and, you know, playing to 100 people in a small you know, upstairs of a, a of a shoe store, you know what I mean? So you never would imagine that you would go worldwide with it, you know what I'm saying? Even though back then when I was younger, there was beach parties. So people did bring their set out on the beach and do beach parties. Um, but you would never think it would travel worldwide, you know, and that's amazing to me where you could be in somewhere like this, or you could be in Puerto Rico, or you could be in Ibiza, or you could be in Greece, and Mykonoso, and all these exotic uh, places, you know? Um, and that's the, most, that's the most important thing, is just being able to bring that music to these people that are there on vacation, or maybe they came there just for the party, you know? So it's, it's different every time. Every country's different as well, too. And you play differently in each country as well. Oh, really? So you, you find, have, like, I different anyway. crowds, they respond to Oh, yeah, totally. definitely. A record that may work here may not work in Ibiza, may not work in Mykonos, may not work in, you know, Croatia. You know, so it's just the way you play it, but at the same time, it's a different crowd. You know, you, you're, you have different people in front of you in, in each country, so. Let's talk a little bit about crate digging, because I read that you started um a lot of your career started when you were working in a record store and you started co collecting records and now you've collected what like fifty thousand records or something yeah that, that was probably about fifty thousand was probably about three or four years ago it's definitely probably 60 it's probably about 60 now i just acquired a really really big um 45 collection um which was about 8,000 pieces. So that kind of brought me up about 10,000 records, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it's just, you know, the, the, the fascination with, with record collecting, um, I use for a couple of different things, you know, whether it's for production, whether it's for to, um, to play it as a DJ, or just to play and collect it. Now, I don't collect music just because something's rare or somebody says there's a, there's you know this or that, I have to like the record first and foremost. Like I said, I'm gonna sample it, or um, I'm gonna play it, you know, play it out. Um, but it's an experience, you know. what I'm saying to 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 know that you're gonna go out on a Saturday on a Sunday, you're gonna hit either a record show or record stores, and seeing you you don't know what you're gonna find, you know what I mean. And it's kind of like it's crazy because I can walk into a spot and know firsthand just on feeling if there's stuff in the store or not. And I haven't looked at anything yet. So that to me is a, is a whole, there's an art form to that as well. It's fun, you know? I, I love going into warehouses. Um, I love record shows. 
And also I get, it gets me, it's like one of those things that, you know, people go to spas to kind of just chill out or just to kind of like zone out. The record buying experience for me puts me in that, that headspace, you know what I'm saying? And your heart's still a flutter when you find like a new record that kind of... Oh, absolutely. It's crazy stories. You know, I've been to spots in the Bronx where, you know, you walk into a store and there's records in the basement and you go down to the basement, there's no lights. And then finally you got the flashlight on and I'm in boots. And next thing you know, I got water up to my knees and there's like these things flying around and you don't even know what they are, but they're this big and there's, you know... It's, it's crazy, but there's a wall of 45s where that window is, and I'm over there pulling things and just seeing what I pull out. You don't know what you're pulling out. You're just pulling. Next thing you know, you find some gems in there. So it's, it's, it's just part of it, you know? And it's kind of diversity of sound, something that's really important to you. Because, I mean, from your kind of um, interest in what you've done over the course of your career. I mean, you've spanned so many different genres, but also, you know, from the most mainstream to the most underground and reggae soul, but also kind of pop. Um, do you need that to kind of keep you excited or? Well, absolutely. The record collection is the, is the base of everything. That's the inspiration for everything. You know, when you, you know, when I'm gonna go into a studio and, and record a few days before I sit in the room and I'll pull things out. A cover will inspire me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a record, a sound, a break in a record, chords in a record, it, it, it depends what it is. But um, it's, it's different every time, but I do sit and just kind of get, put my head into that and um, see what I find. Next thing you know, those, those ideas from those records go into my recordings but i'm not i'm not actually taking the parts it's just inspiration from you know those recordings you have worked over the years you've kind of been um quite a serial collaborator with people like todd terry and lou vega um does that collaborate i mean how does the collaborative process work for you back in the days or now it's two different you see that's i think that's what's missing today um way back when we did records we were in the room together you know what i'm saying um if it's me and you and and we're bouncing back on ideas together it's so different if you're in london i'm in new jersey and i'm sending you a beat and i'm gonna i'm telling you put these chords on it or whatever see what you hear and then you gotta send it back to me i gotta wait for it oh no let's change this to, then it goes back to you so that's today's process Imagine if you're in the room together with these DJs and artists and producers and musicians, you could do things a lot quicker and bang out a lot more records. You know what I'm saying? Back then, you know, I was doing anywhere between two to four remixes per week and then traveling on the weekend, either to Europe or to London, doing gigs over there. And sometimes I would stay in London and do sessions in London and record and then come back home, back in the studio, press up records. So a lot of stuff was going on. That's why there was so much music out in, a sh in, in that period of time, from like 90 to like um, 98, 99, to when we did around New York and Soul Time. MK would come into the studio, Todd would come into the studio, Roger S would come into the studio, um, various DJ producers, and then you know it went from you know, messing around with drum machines to wanting to add uh, a percussionist or a bassist or a guitarist. Then the instrumentation started getting more and more bigger because we was like, oh, we did that already, let's add this. And then it kept growing. You know, it, then it became horns and then it became strings and then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we got more complex with our songs and our remixes and stuff like that and just kept growing. You know, and then around 95, you know, I, I got an idea from being in, in London, um, well, not London, in, in Southport, um, watching Giles Peterson. He was playing like these jazz, up-tempo jazz records. And when I heard that, I got a, like a beat in my head and we went back and did the first New York and Soul track, which was the Nervous track, which was the first Broken Beat record. You know, so, um, and that kept growing from there too. So, um, 
yeah, it's just, it's, I've done a lot. You know, sometimes I think to myself, I forget even the records I've done, you know, but um, it all stems back to that record collection. It always goes back to there. Like I'm in that mode right now. Right now I'm in, in a phase where I'm starting to create again. I know what I've done. I want to take everything I've done and then take it to the next level. So that's a whole process in itself because I got to kind of outbeat myself. You know what I mean? And um, there's pretty big, big records to outbeat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, that's my mission right now. That's what I've been doing in them records, in the room, listening to stuff, getting my, you know, getting my mind into that zone where I was when I was 19 and 20 and 21. I was thinking differently. I'd have mortgages, I'd have card notes, I'd have babies, I didn't have none of that. You know, I was just me and the records in, in the room. So things are a little different now, but it's, it's that adjustment period. But I'm actually in that headspace to create that music again. That's exciting to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And actually, one of the things that I wanted to speak to you about was, you know, you've touched on that kind of um, switch over from analog to digital production and how that's kind of maybe affected how people work. I mean, cool. okay. how are you kind of producing at the moment? Like, what, what, when you get into the studio, what are you kind of expecting to, to do and to use? I'm still analog. You know what I'm saying? Besides that, you know, on the road, on a plane, obviously, if I have a laptop, I'm digital. But when I go back to the crib, it goes back to analog. It goes back to, you know, and I still press records. So the whole process of making a record it gets mastered off tape. It doesn't get mastered off digital, which a lot of people do, which is the wrong way to do it. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if a customer or consumer is, is buying a piece of wax, a record, you want to give them the best possible record, right? So I, I do anyway. The way it was done back in the days was whatever was played, it went to tape, it got mixed down from, from the multi-track tape to the, to, the, to, the, you know, to master tape, and then it went to mastering. You know what I'm saying? And that process is the way we heard it on the records, you know, but today they do it a little different. They kind of cut corners, but you can hear that. You know, sometimes you play some of these records or these reissues that they do, and um, they sound like a CD on a, on a piece of vinyl. I think, you know, now it's making people aware of it. You know, we have a new generation to teach now. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's one of my missions is to expose this next generation to this music as well as the process as well as how we did it i think is important because if not you know a lot of for a long time everybody was very secretive nobody wanted to you know if if you wanted to learn something nobody would give you the day the time to say all right come on i want to i'm gonna teach you what do you want to learn like it was, everything was so quiet and everybody was so close and nah, I'm not telling you this and that. And that's why we lost, lost styles of music and, and producers because they were just caught up in this, I don't want to tell you nothing, um, but I will continue to push and try to change that because if we don't teach this next generation, it's gone, it's out of here. As we know as DJs, there's a lot of syncing going on, there's a lot of... Uh, plan sets happening and it goes back to your first question so let's say you ask me about the different countries and the settings me as a dj i can't come with the same playlist in all those settings because technically what if it doesn't work what now right it's true you're lost in that you're nah, in front of the I'm crowd saying it's, it's the party's it. not you know what i mean so yeah. basically you know you have to learn from square one and you have to learn to be able to bob and weave and make it if something's all the I listen I play records sometimes I don't get the feeling that I want and they're not working for me so I move somewhere else if it's if the set's planned you can't do that you know what I'm saying so we've been lucky enough to speak to um, um, a few different legends over the course of um, course of this week and um, people who've come up from the party scene and from the DJ scene and when it was all vinyl and they were having to kind of go out there in the crowd. Maybe have a kind of um, different attitude uh, to the skill set that that is in itself than the people now who maybe have produced a track and so then they become a DJ. Kind There's of a lot of that. 
you know, and it is its own set of skills that are just as kind but of. See, but see, you know what? There's, 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 there's guys out there that they got a hit record or they got a buzz on them and they got the opportunity to go on DJ. I'm never going to tell nobody to go not nah, say nah. They, I'm not, I can't do it. But, okay, so now you got to learn from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't cop out and start from seven where well, you got to start from the bottom. You know what I mean? So also, you know what? Okay, certain people, they don't have that talent to actually put those records together. But you know what? They might have great selection, and it's the way they bring it across. I ain't mad at them. You know what I mean? I, not at all. Not at all. You know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that got big records that became DJs second. You know? It is what it is. You know, they might expose people to, to, to this music that I can't get to or the next man can't get to. So all it does is open up other, you know, other lanes for us. You know what I'm saying? What can we look forward to from you um, in, the next, in the next few months, in the next year? What should we be looking out for? This year marks 25 years of um, my label, Dope Wax. So I'm actually restructuring that. I got a lot of things coming out. I can't really say what I'm doing because there's a lot of, there's still paperwork to being done on a lot of the records and I wouldn't put anything out there just yet. But now nah, there, there is, if you go back and you look back at my solo projects, that will tell you what's coming alone. Can't wait. I can't wait either. <laughs> uh, trust me, I want to get there. You know what I mean? I want to feel comfortable and I want to be able to get that music out there and, and I'll do myself. So that's the plan. It's exciting times, watch this space. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you.